Yo, what up Lucid Crew? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, I am Lucid Rob, and today we're gonna be looking at videos from all over the internet, looking at things that we shouldn't be looking at, learning stuff that they don't want us to know, and, and really getting the attention of people that we don't want, like the, the FBI guy in the van outside. Listen up, we're doing it. Let's get into it. The Earth might be bigger than we thought. For years, people have debated over the shape of the Earth if it is round or flat. But what if the Earth had more than just seven continents, and Antarctica is a giant ice wall that kept us from seeing the rest of the continents? What if, once you made it past the ice wall, you'll find 20 other continents that are hidden from us? And what if there was a map that showed this? There are theories that these continents contain prehistoric animals, aliens, and advanced civilizations, and that the seven continents that we are living in is actually a giant farm or business owned by a small handful of families that make up the filthy rich past the ice wall. That is why. Let's say 20 other continents out there, outside of the seven that we have currently how do we know how do we know how many different continents would be there like where do those 20 continents come from we all know on this channel if you watch us i'm i'm not a flat earther i'm, I'm not opposed to hearing about it and learning more stuff but i think there's a possibility just based on flight paths and us not being able to go certain places that okay yeah maybe there are more continents uh that we're not allowed to go to but doesn't necessarily mean that the earth is flat uh, in my opinion to do that but if you do know where all these other land masses and and countries where the information from these comes from let me know in the comments because i would like to know that have you ever heard the crazy conspiracy theory that celebrities and high profile companies will try to manipulate the google search engine to get rid of bad results about them the pathological people pleaser taylor swift has been accused of doing this multiple times to save her reputation. Conspirators will say that Taylor Swift is only dating Kansas City Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey who has a famous rivalry against the Jets and will go to the Jets games to get enough of a buzz and enough Google search results to bury all the Google results about her overusing her Jets that got her in a lot of hot water last year for disproportionately making her contribute to climate change. This theory gets even deeper. The most insane example is that Disney purposely crafted their most popular movie franchise ever to be called Frozen. So now when you Google Disney Frozen, the only thing that comes up is Elsa and Anna instead of the most long running insane Disney conspiracy theory that Walt Disney's head was cut off and cryogenically frozen and placed underneath Disney World. And it's actually crazy that it worked and they've successfully buried that search result. Before I say the last example, make sure you follow so you finally know the craziest conspiracy theories about all your favorite celebrities and about the world and request which one you want to see next. A huge rumor in this is that singers will make song titles off of what people commonly Google about them. Maybe they can't completely sway the results but they can at least profit off of it so when you google ariana grande boyfriend her song comes up instead of this and the whole world trying to tell her she's a homewrecker for her new boyfriend there's so many more examples of this google search concept that i would love to show you so let me know if you're interested yeah i don't think that's a theory at all i don't see anything wrong with it either honestly trying to capitalize off of the traffic that that's already there um if you're new to the channel i'm i've been in marketing and sales for over a decade so uh what this specifically is talking about is called search engine optimization seo uh it's the first thing i ever did when i first got into marketing the years and years ago in 2010 maybe 2011 i don't remember but uh uh basically we would write articles with keywords we would do keyword research to see like what people were searching for that was relevant to the business we were writing for and then we would write articles heavily around those keywords so that when people would you know search for these topics those companies would rank higher in Google and being in Yahoo and whatever the fuck else was around back then. Uh, and then within those articles would be links to their offers and products or, or services or whatever. So this is a very real thing. Businesses do it all the time. Celebrities, they're a business. Their brand is a business. So I can totally see them doing this. However, as far as doing it to bury bad press, sure. I'm, there's not a doubt in my mind that that happens. And, and I can't say that that uh, I don't understand the appeal of it. I mean, I've only been a YouTuber for a couple months now, and I already get some pretty gnarly comments once in a while from people just for just for watching TikToks. Like people go out of their way to be <laughs> say some fucking gnarly shit. I don't care because they're just fucking shitheads and they're trolls. But imagine being at like a level of celebrity where there are literally millions of people that are sending you death threats every day because you made a decision that they wouldn't do personally or something like people take the shit way too fucking personal way too fucking serious and you know who you are relax <laughs> so yeah I, I i could totally see that being a thing that happens very much so not a theory at all i'm absolutely positive that it happens as far as walt disney's head being frozen under disney world i think they could find a better place to hide it than underneath a place that has literally billions of people visit so, I don't know. 
You, you tell me. I don't fucking know. An anonymous man has posted a video on the dark web entitled The Dark Web Will Always Reveal the Truth. The pyramids are not what you think. In this video, he illegally enters the pyramids using a remote-controlled car and stumbles across some terrible things. Why? Just just why? Why would you send me that? Nothing happened. See what I mean about trolls? <laughs> Fuckers. <laughs> I love those like ultra realistic like politician masks oh man there's a uh technical metal band that wears <laughs> all of those masks let me see if i can remember the name for you yeah the metal band is called the nuclear power trio and they're just really good instrumental progressive like metal and they wear those masks outside of that hillary clinton was drinking that shit like a fucking fish tank filter it's like bubbles coming from the bottom of the glass <laughs> into her mouth what the fuck and the dudes in the beginning look like they have Tourette syndrome the guy saluting uh putin they fucking move their neck contort it all fucking weird like i do when i'm watching these fucking videos <laughs> nobody's gonna know nobody's gonna know they're gonna know how would they know how would they know how would they know i can't Okay, maybe you can answer this for me. Did they just take like every place like Asgard, Olympus, Atlantis, like all these places from mythology and, and basically just assume that each one of those was a real place outside of our world, like inside the ice wall? Because if that's the case, we could say Metropolis is out there as well. Gotham City is out there as well. Like, So if that's the case, I'm not really down with it. I'm not really down with like, oh, well, they wrote about this. So it must be real, but since we can't see it here, and we're pretty confident there's stuff out there, we're just going to say that it's out there somewhere. Like, that doesn't really sit well with me, so if I'm mistaken, let me know. But if that's how it is, like, explain to me how that's logical at all. Churches and cathedrals were never built for religion and places of worship, and I'm going to show you exactly what these were built for. Now, churches and cathedrals display cymatic patterns in their windows, and cymatics are patterns made by frequency and sound. These windows display high vibrational healing frequencies, and some chapels even have songs encoded into their architecture. Now this is what cathedrals look like on the inside. Clearly, this is not set up and designed for people to all be sitting and listening to someone all the way at the front. They were designed for people to lay down and listen to the healing frequencies from the instruments in these cathedrals. Now our ancestors knew exactly how powerful frequencies are. And the Oracle Chamber is a perfect example of this. This is an underground chamber in Malta that pitches sound at 111 hertz. And 111 hertz frequency has been proven to kill cancer cells. Now these cathedrals were also designed to generate their own free energy and convert it into electricity. 
This is why the word cathode is in cathedral. A cathode is a type of electrode through which electrons move. Now this information has been intentionally hidden from us from our predecessors. However, we are in a time of awakening. The public consciousness is shifting and this information is coming to light. And this will definitely be a part of our free new world. Peace and love. That's super interesting. I'm not saying that I don't believe it because yeah, I, I do kind of believe that to an extent. Um, I mean, I've been in like super old cathedrals like when I was visiting Ireland and they're fucking beautiful and they're created in, in such a way to where it's like kind of like he said it's like it doesn't seem like people are just there to like sit down and listen to someone talk in the front like a like a standard you know modern day baptist church but based on that frequency healing cancer uh was cancer even around back then I'm not saying that that frequency doesn't heal other things but saying that's been proven to heal cancer i'm curious i can't think because cancer didn't really become prevalent until we started eating like processed foods and i think more like like wheat and 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 just shit like started spraying our fucking crops and and just eating trash uh makes me wonder if that was used to heal kind of everything following the introduction of modifications which had been indicated by the results of full-scale tunnel testing of the avro car at nasa ames research center a continuation test program was begun the objective of this program was to prove the effectiveness of the new control system from hovering through transition in the presence of the ground up to free flight conditions the program consisted in the main of further wind tunnel tests at Ames Research Center to prove the effects of these modifications with a short flight test program at Avro to establish that the hovering capability had not deteriorated. A brief terrain test program was later added. The modifications provided for aft deployment of the peripheral jet sheet from the wing tip for transition and forward flight. I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. We can say that the recent sightings are in no way connected with any secret development by any department of the United States. These motherfuckers had flying saucers back in the 1960s, and here I am in 2023, I still can't get a fucking hoverboard. The fuck, bro? But wasn't that tech similar to Harrier jets? Do we still use Harrier jets? Is that even a real fucking thing? I don't know. I don't fucking know anything today. <laughs> Let me know. There's this unknown 15-ton object orbiting Earth that is estimated to have been there for 13,000 years. With all this talk of UFOs and non-human biologics these days, it's time to start asking the question, what if they're already here? And we've got some close-up HD photos of this thing that are gonna blow your mind. This is the first thing we'd see if an alien species ever finally decided to start coming down to us. Their motherships in our sky. Which, Apple TV Plus series Invasion actually does a really good job at depicting just how realistic this whole scenario would be. Documenting the real-time experience of the events that would take place if an alien species were to invade. Through the eyes of five ordinary people around the globe as they struggle to make sense of the chaos around them. But in our world, there's this object they discovered around our planet back in the 50s and is apparently still orbiting us to this day. This thing may just be our first sign of what's to come and has been dubbed the Black Knight Satellite. It's a confirmed object documented by NASA and we've since been told that it's just space junk, a discarded thermal cover. Which granted it might be, but today we're asking the question, what if it's not? It's rumored to be an artificial satellite and apparently has been there since 11,000 BC. If extraterrestrial life ever did want to invade, they'd probably want to do a bit of recon first. And that's pretty much what the invading species in the Invasion series did, with their mothership floating high in our planet's orbit for everyone on Earth to see. But what's really crazy is that this Black Knight satellite was initially detected back in 1954, three years before humanity's first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, went into orbit. And the Black Knight satellite was found to be in a polar orbit, meaning it goes north to south, while debris and space junk are expected to follow the rotation of our planet. Polar orbits also happen to be the preferred orbital path for reconnaissance, covering the most amount of ground and ideal for an invading species. Then, in 1998, NASA's STS-88 mission did a direct flyby and got this incredible high definition photo of it. I don't know about you, but that sure doesn't look like no thermal blanket to me. It's even emitting its own radio signal, which the NSA, many astronomers around the world, and even ham radio operators all independently came up with the same decoding of that signal. This radio signal is allegedly emitting a message, more specifically a map 
a star map of the constellation Buotis, with the only star out of place in this map being Epsilon Buotis, indicating that that may have been the origin star of this satellite. The position of the stars in this map was also slightly off from where they are now, but would match perfectly with our star positions 13,000 years ago, leading to believe that's when the satellite arrived. Epsilon Buotis is also a very special star system. There's a strange phenomenon there called the Buotis Void, which esteemed theoretical physicists around the world all confirmed that light appears to be getting bent around that area far too big to be a black hole, some of whom suggest that it can even be an advanced civilization, using cloaking technology to keep themselves hidden from observers, like us. Alien species with cloaking technology is familiar territory in the Apple TV Plus series Invasion, where they use it to turn themselves and their ships invisible to the human eye, and we're forced to get creative to keep up. Season 2 of Invasion is airing now, so stream it on Apple TV Plus to find out what we'd do if the Black Knight satellite turned out to be real. What a great ad. What a great way to, to pitch that TV show, too. If there are any advertisers out there watching this and you want me to do some shit like that, let me know, bud. I will I will talk about the Black Knight satellite all day. <laughs> really, I'm going to check that show out. Uh, and I have no affiliation like this guy. But that is a super interesting topic. Like, I feel like we need to talk about that more than we are, right? It's like, been there this whole fucking time. I feel like it's, it's like the moon to me. It's just a fucking orbiting satellite. That was put here artificially, built artificially, uh, and and they're different styles too. So it could be two different, two different species. The moon and the black light satellite could be two completely different alien species doing reconnaissance on our planet at different points in history. It's wild. I don't know. I guess anything's possible. But let me know what you think, because uh, you probably more, more know. You probably more know than I do. <laughs> you probably know more than I do. Holy fuck, man. It's been a long day. <laughs> How true it was when Nikola Tesla said, All these years I have spent in the service of mankind brought me nothing but insults and humiliation. If your hate could be turned into electricity, it would light up the whole world. Our senses enable us to perceive only a minute portion of the outside world. What one man calls God, another calls the laws of physics. I don't care that they stole my idea. I care because they don't have any of their own. Be alone. That is the secret to invention. Be alone. That is where all the ideas are born. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. All that was great in the past was ridiculed, condemned, combated, suppressed, only to emerge all the more powerfully, all the more triumphantly from the struggle. We crave new sensations, but soon become indifferent to them. The wonders of yesterday are today common occurrences. <laughs> Fuck, man, that's real. It's crazy how true that is. I mean, just think about this. Like, like, let's apply it to this stuff with the UFOs and shit. I mean, for years, decades, you know, people like myself and, and probably you watching this and, and other people, other channels, other researchers have been talking about UFOs and talking about you know, government conspiracies and all this stuff. And we're called crazy, called conspiracy theorists, called nut jobs. And then when the stuff comes to light, it, it, it is what it is. Like, it, it just becomes true. Or like inventions, you know, things that people thought we'd never do. People thought that the, the Wright brothers would never get a fucking plane to fly. People thought that Elon Musk would never get a self-landing fucking rocket. You know, there were all these different things. People thought the internet was going to be a fucking fad. It was never going to work. All these different things that, that people said were crazy or just never going to work have now become, like, life, become standard, a standard way of living. And that's really what it comes down to. I've noticed from, you know, just trying to grow as a person and, you know, personally in my relationships, my friendships, and my business and stuff, it's really, like, it's hard at first and it seems unrealistic even because, like, you haven't done it yet. But then you see other people doing it. You see other people, you know, coming close to doing it. You're like, okay, this is this is possible. Or, or you do it yourself. You try something, and you get a little better, and you get a little better, and then eventually, the thing that you never thought you would be doing, like me right now, recording these YouTube videos, and <laughs> like, you know, having this like audience and having all you guys, you know, to hang out with and shit. Like, I never thought that would be a thing that would happen. But I just kept at it, and I kept doing it, and you know, you guys kept coming back to hang out, and you know, give me more more cool shit to watch, and. And that was what I'm doing. So it's crazy to think that just a few months ago, I was like, nah, this, this is never going to, this is never going to be anything. And that's how it is with everything. So, but if there's something you're working on right now that seems like out of touch, but you have the ability to work toward it, it's, it's not out of touch. 
It's not out of touch at all. If it's something you really want to do and something you're really passionate about, fucking do it. Fucking do it, man. I've accomplished so much I never thought I would in my life. And yeah, it took a long time and it was hard and it didn't happen the first time. And a lot of it still hasn't happened. But I'm at a point now to where when I look back, I'm like, holy shit, I did that. Holy fuck, I did that. Oh my God, I can't believe I went there. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I experienced that. And it all just comes down to trying and trying and trying and trying and, and, and improving along the way. Not eventually getting there. The reason most people don't experience things they want to experience is because they quit too early. You know, it's, it's a sad truth. Even when someone dies physically, you are actually still given a choice to continue the physical life. Many of you have actually died but have chosen to continue to live that physical life. Sometimes you don't know it, you don't remember it because it doesn't serve you to remember that moment of choice. Sometimes you create for yourself the idea of what you call a close call. Right. Ooh, I don't know how I got out of that alive. <laughs> but I seemingly did. Well, the truth is you may not have. You may have actually died. But then the guides may have said, are you sure you really want to go on? Or did you want to continue the life in a parallel reality to make it seem as if you want to explore something in that life that's still going on, but you know it's a parallel reality? And you said yes. So then you will simply wake up and go, wow, that was a close one. <laughs> Maybe not even remembering that you actually died and were given a choice to go on or come back. So the point is, is you're always in control of what's going on. So if you are still here, if you can still open your eyes, you must have made a choice that says that continuing to experience this physical reality in the way you're experiencing it is actually part of the way you wanted to evolve. There's something that's going to happen that will add to you in a way that simply going into the non-physical won't give you. Otherwise, you would leave. There is something here you're excited about doing, otherwise you would leave. Because it actually is that easy. All right? You have to learn to trust that. You have to learn that there will be surprises, and if you leave now, they won't happen. And when you get there, you'll go, oh, shucks. I was going to surprise myself, and now I have forced myself to leave, and now I won't have that surprise I wanted, so I guess now I'll do it again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. <clears throat> or not. It's all up to you. But the point is, is if you're here, you want to be. Even though you don't know it. You want to be. You have to trust that your life will show you what it is you wanted to be here for. And it will. Very interesting. I didn't know where that was going. That started off really fucking weird. <laughs> I had no idea what to expect. But uh, it's a good metaphor. It was a good metaphor for like what I was just talking about in the past video, uh, the past clip. Just like keep on keeping on, you know. Like he said, if you're here, you're here for a reason. It's because you don't want to go yet, and and I hope you don't. Like I hope that you stick around and and, and work on the things you want to work on and experience life. You know, experience the things you want to experience. Because I mean, I say this all the time, man. It's kind of become a motto. Like life is cool even when it's not. There's always fucking bad shit going on. There's always good shit going on. It's up to you to choose which one you want to focus on. Give the bad shit just enough attention you need to take care of it, whether that be get it out of the way or handle it. But if it's out of your control, give it the smallest amount of energy you can. You know, give it give it the, the slightest bit of attention needed to just kind of get it out of the way. And if it's something that you can control that's going negatively, focus that energy on fixing it and then turn to that negative thing into a positive thing. So, good metaphor. Weird weird way to fucking word it, but I, I, I kind of see where he was going with that. And it's kind of strange. I've had a lot of near-death experiences, bad car accidents. I've almost drowned a few times in my life, like very close one time. Um, so, that's where I was kind of weirded out in the beginning. I was like, what is this guy saying? Like, maybe I did die in the car accident. Maybe I did drown. And I just like, you know what? I got more shit to do. Okay, you're in a new fucking reality. And now it's the Berenstain Bears because your dumbass didn't know how to swim. Which maybe, maybe that's what he meant. <laughs> Humans did exist. They are petrified. Research Tartaria. And on the present, would I know just really well, really, really love that. 
So what do you think would cause what would, what could happen to petrified giants like that if if they let's assume it was real you guys know where i stand on this giant stuff but then again i don't know if the earth is bigger than we think it is you know oxygen was different back there. It's more foliage more oxygen people think could grow taller in mythology they talk about titans and whatnot so who, who's, who knows like i said i'm not saying i'm correct i'm just saying as of right now i don't believe it i don't i don't see it being a possibility but that's why i'm asking you what could cause them to just like be petrified like that and like keep their form would it be like a, a meteor could it be like a um, fucking nuclear like i don't know i'm not really sure what would cause that just like a flash petrification right <sighs> i don't know <laughs>
Shit, man. Maybe. Fuck. I mean, with them thinking we have, like, I mean, how many, like, it's like 12 or like 23 dimensions. I don't know. There's an insane amount of dimensions that even mainstream scientists think that exist. Not to mention, you know, the whatever the fuck us, you know, conspiracy theorists believe as far as other dimensions and, you know, beings that we can't see. Just like incredible beings that on different planes of existence, whatever the case may be. Eat mushrooms, talk to weird fucking beings, whatever. it. So maybe, maybe there is fucking wild shit going on here. Unexplainable by the things that we can see and that we can actually see and that's tangible and tasteable, smellable, whatever the fuck, you know, we can perceive with our senses. I'm just rambling now. I'm just saying fucking words. <laughs> I'm just saying a bunch of fucking words now. But, again, like, who knows? Maybe. Maybe there's fucking motherfuckers fighting right here in my kitchen. And I can't see them right now. Hey, don't knock that over. The blender was expensive. Among the eight major planets, Venus is the closest one to Earth. It only takes a hundred days for humans to reach Venus. In addition, Venus is Earth's twin sibling. Whether in terms of mass, volume, or composition, Venus is extremely similar to Earth. Given this, why do we go for distant pursuits, trying to land on Mars or even Jupiter? In fact, the Soviet Union started studying Venus as early as 1961, continuing until 1983. During these 20 years, the Soviet Union launched 16 Venus probes, one after another. Unfortunately, all these probes eventually disappeared on Venus. Only the probes numbered 13 and 14 managed to transmit a few photos from Venus. According to relevant data, among these 16 probes, the longest operating time was two hours for probe number 13, after which it went completely silent. The reason for this lies in the incredibly harsh conditions on Venus. Using the term horrifying is not an exaggeration at all. Now let's take a look at just how terrifying Venus is from the perspective of a probe. All right, so I get a lot of comments yelling at me because of me cutting off videos like this. Like the video just ended and, and it didn't show anything. I didn't do that. That's how this video was cut before it was sent to me. So I watch videos that you guys, the viewers, send to me either through Discord or through TikTok. If you find me on TikTok, they send me uh, shit through there. And these videos are this way already. I, they, the music is already on them, all, always with that same fucking three songs all the time. And so these channels, these people just cut the videos off like that. It's clickbait. Clickbait you into watching another video. Get the views up. It's very, very annoying. But future reference, just so you know, so you don't have to comment and yell at me for cutting off videos before it gets to the good part. I don't do that shit. I just watch videos you guys send me. So if you have a problem with it and you want me to watch the entirety of these videos, you find them and you send them to me and I will be glad to do it i will lovingly watch a video that explains the entirety of the topic that it's speaking on trust me because i want to i want to learn the shit too i want to fucking learn the shit just as much as you do but that's it for today's video guys thank you so much for sending these videos um really cool topics really 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 cool topics here uh, i feel like i learned something new every time i record these videos and i hope that you do too because really it just comes down to um trying to you know grow our perception of reality and you know, find the, the logic and the rationality between the taboo uh, and behind the, the hidden doors that the elites and the powers that be try to keep us from understanding the world around us. Um, and me doing the occasional newscast uh, <laughs> voice. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm, I'm fucking out of here. Lucid Crew, thank you so much for watching. Um, if it's your first time watching this video, thank you so much. If you made it this far, consider liking, subscribing, sharing the video. It helps out the channel a lot. You can also go down to the video description and join the Discord and in the video submissions channel, send me videos you want me to watch, whether it be YouTube shorts or uh, Instagram reels or um, TikTok videos. And it's all super great. Uh, there's also a link to my merchandise down there. There's a link to my SoundCloud, which you will find this song playing right now on top of other songs that I've, I've written and produced. Um, and yeah, uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, enjoy your weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Peace.